All right. Um, I'm going to make sure it's sharing the right screen because somehow I think it might not be. Um, hang on. It is. Okay. So this is the notes for section 4.4. This is applications of linear equations, which means um, if you know anything about math, word problems. I promise we're going to be okay. Take a deep breath. There are four kinds here. The first is using a system to solve equations involving cost. So remember here that we're talking about systems of equations, which means we're talking in two variables. So at a movie theater, not that we go to movie theaters anymore, a couple buys one large popcorn and two small drinks for $12.50. So we know we're talking about popcorns and drinks. A group of teenager buys two large popcorns and five small drinks for $28.50. Find the cost of one popcorn and the cost of one drink. Okay, so the first step we always have to follow is we have to define our variables. We're going to use x and y. So I'm going to make x the cost of a drink of one of them and y the cost of popcorn. Okay, and then I have two equations. I have what happens with the couple. They bought one popcorn, one y, and two drinks and that was gonna be $12.50, right? And then I have the teenagers. The teenagers bought two popcorns and five drinks. So they bought two popcorns and five drinks, and that whole thing cost $28.50. That's it. So now I have two equations in a system, and now I can solve them However, it makes me happy to solve them. For me, I told you before, it's probably some sort of addition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 2. Um, I'll put it down here. So I'm going to have negative 2y minus 4x equals negative $25. Right? Double everything. So the y's are going to cancel. It's going to be 1x left, and then it's going to be 350. Oh, no. Yeah, 350. So that worked out just fine, didn't it? Okay. So my drink is going to cost $3.50. So now I'm just going to go back to one of the original equations and figure out what the popcorn costs. So y plus 2 times $3.50 equals $12.50. Um, y plus $7 equals 1250. 1250 minus $7. Um, y equals 550. Well, then the popcorn is 550. That's it. That's all there is to this. Okay? Watch through it again if you need to. All right. So let's try another one. Lynn went to a fast food restaurant and spent $20. She got four hamburgers and five orders of french fries. The next day, Ricardo went to the same restaurant and got 10 hamburgers and seven orders of french fries for $41.20. Use the system to determine the cost of a burger and an order of french fries. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to define our variables, x and y. x is a burger. y is the french fries. <coughs> and then we're going to look at our two cases. So Lynn went. And she got four hamburgers. Hold on. And five orders of fries. And she spent $20. Okay. Ricardo went the next day and they didn't change the prices. He bought 10 hamburgers plus seven orders of french fries, and he spent $41.20. Okay, once again, I have a system. I can solve it with whatever style I want, but for me, I think it makes more sense to use addition here. There's no variable without a coefficient. I don't really want to divide everything. That sounds miserable. So now I have to think about how I want to do that. I could, let's see, I could turn both the four and the 10 into 20s. Okay, so I'm going to multiply the top one by a negative 5 and the bottom one by 2. So then I'll rewrite. So I'm going to have negative 20x minus 25y equals minus $100. And on the bottom, I'm going to have 10x 
plus 14y equals $81.20. Okay, so combine stuff. Oh, 82.40. I forgot to actually double it. All right, on the bottom, I'm going to get, let's see. Oh, I forgot to double that too. Good gravy. <coughs> 20x plus 14y equals 82.40. X is canceled. That leaves me with 9y equals $18.60. Divide by 9. Y is going to be $2.07. Is it 1860? What did I do with my calculator? That doesn't make sense, does it? 1860 divided by nine. No, oh, it does. Two dollars and about seven cents, give or take. So hamburger, let's see, French fries are 207. So then we can go back in and solve. So go to an original equation. 4x plus 5 times 207 equals $20. Um, let's see, 4 plus 4x plus 1035 equals 20 minus that 1035. 4x equals, what's that going to be, what, 9.65? And we divide by 4, and x is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $2.42, give or take. So now we know the price of hamburger and french fries. All right, so the next case is solving a system for investments. And this is going to sound crazy, but it's, it's actually simpler than we think. So let's take it one step at a time. Joanna has a total of $6,000 to deposit in two accounts, and there are two things right there, okay? One earns 3.5% simple interest, the other earns 2.5%. The total amount of interest at the end of the first year is $195. Find the amount in each account. So we have our two variables again. X is the first account. Y is the second. And here's, this one is special for this because there's two things going on. First, she has those two accounts together make a total of $6,000. Those two accounts together also make a certain amount of interest, $195. But it's based on the percentage of what's in the account. So I'm going to rewrite each of these as a um, decimal and multiply by the account. I'm going to not have enough for how. I'll go backwards. So 0.025y plus 0.035x. It doesn't matter which number goes with which, which percentage, but it basically it says that this account, x plus y, those two account balances is $6,000 total. And then it, the second equation says, 3.5% interest of that amount in X plus 2.5% interest on that amount in Y in a year is $195. It's all this is. All right, so now I have to make them match up. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to pick one of these percentages. I'm going to take that one. I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 0.025. Same thing we've been doing. So I'm going to get 0 negative 0.025x minus 0.025y equals whatever 0.025 times 6,000 is, is negative 150. <coughs> Oops, 25. Okay, so that gives me over here 0.01x. These guys cancel equals what? Uh, 45. Divide. X is going to be $4,500. And then you can go back up here and solve. If first account has $4,500, you can figure out that the second account has $1,500. All right, let's try the second one. All we're going to do is set it up. 
Addie has a total of $8,000 in two accounts. One pays 5% interest, the other pays 6.5. At the end of a year, she earned $475 in interest. Use the systems to determine the amount invested. Once again, X is the first account, Y is the second. Pause, make sure you can do that. You can set this up. All right, so I know X plus Y equals $8,000. And then I'm gonna use the percentages. So 0.05X plus 0.065Y equals 475. That's all. All right, you can do the solving for this one. What I'm going to tell you when you're finished is that X is $3,000 and Y is $5,000. If you get stuck, come into the discussion. That is why it is there. All right, this is similar. This is sort of an, a combination of the last two, okay? This is a mixture problem. So according to new hospital standards, a certain disinfectant solution needs to be 20% alcohol instead of 10%. There you have a jug that has 40% alcohol to adjust the mixture. So I need some 10% solution and some 40% solution to make 20% solution. What we're gonna do here is basically we're finding two amounts. X is the amount of the 40% solution. And Y is gonna be the amount of the 10% solution we need. Okay, basically I'm gonna use X plus Y to make 30 liters. I don't really need that L there, it's just confusing. And what I'm gonna to do to figure out what, how to get that is use my percentages, except there's one extra step here. Just like I did before, I'm gonna use the percentages. So 0.4, 40% X, plus 0 0.10, 10% Y, equals, and this is where I'm going to use that 20%, equals 0 0.2 times 30, 20% of 30. That is where something will fall apart here. If something goes wrong in a mixture problem, this is what it is. Okay, so here's my two systems. Now all I have to do is, you know, so I'm going to re, actually what I can do is I'll rewrite this bottom one because 20% of 30 is six. So remember, I got this is 0.2 times 30, okay? So now I'm just gonna solve the way I've been. I'm gonna multiply the top equation by negative 0.4. Is that what I did in my notes? I don't know. Actually, what I did, I didn't. Why don't we use substitution here? Because why not? I have variables that are um, alone. So I'm gonna move Y to that side and I'm gonna get X equals 30 minus Y. So I can substitute. So I get 0 0.4 times 30 minus Y plus 0 0.1 Y equals six. Now I distribute uh, 0.4 times 30. I of course substituted the opposite direction in my notes. Is going to be 12. So we get 12 minus 0.4y plus 0.1y equals 6. 12 minus 0.3y equals 6 minus 12. So I get 0.3y negative 0.3y equals negative 6 divided by negative 0.3. Um, when I do that, Oops, I get 20. Okay, so I know that the amount of 10% solution needs to be 20 liters. And if I know 20 liters for 10%, if I go back and solve my original equation, x plus y, 20 plus 10, wait, 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 wait. x plus 20 equals 30, I know that that x has gotta be 10. Okay, so let's set up the next one. How many ounces of 20% and 35% acid solution should be mixed together to get 15 ounces of 30% acid? So remember, X is the amount 
of 20% solution, Y is the amount of 35% solution. So I'm going to have X plus Y together gets me 15 ounces, and then 0.2X plus 0.35X equals 30%, um, 0.3 times 15. There are your two equations, okay? When you get all said and done here, X should be 10.36, Y should be 4.63, okay? If you get stuck, come to the discussion, please. All right, one more time. And this time is the one that makes people's brains boil. <coughs> so forgive me in advance. All right, so we have a plane and it's traveling with the wind from Kansas City, Missouri to Denver, Colorado at a distance of 600 minutes and two hours. 600 miles, I should say miles. Let's go 600 minutes. The return trip against the same wind takes three hours. Find the speed of the plane and the speed of the wind. This is crazy. Here is the basic piece of information you need. You need to know that distance equals rate times time. Okay, that is the relationship here. So we have two pieces of information. We've got the P is gonna be the speed of the plane and still air. This basically, speed of the plane and still air. W is gonna be the wind speed. And here's what I know. I know that in one direction from Kansas City to Denver, the plane traveled 600 miles. The speed of the plane plus the wind, the distance, okay, this distance is 600. The speed of the plane plus the speed of the wind, this is the rate, took two hours, okay? Distance equals rate, the speeds together, speed of the plane plus the wind, because in the, it's traveling with the wind, so they added together and made them faster. Going the other way from Denver to Kansas City, same distance, right? But in the other direction, the plane was pushing against the wind. So the wind subtracted away its speed and it took three hours. There's my two equations. If you don't understand, go back through and think about it again. So the distance equals the rate, the speed of the plane plus the speed of the wind and how long it took them to get to Denver, okay? Two hours. On the way back, this is there, okay? This is trip A, and this is the return. On the way back, same distance, but the rate is the speed of the plane minus the speed of the wind. The speed of the wind is slowing it down, and it took three hours. All right, well, so now I just have to like make all this work a little more neatly so I can distribute. So I'm gonna change colors here. I'm actually gonna add a slide, do it on the next slide. Mm -hmm. So I've got 600 equals 2P plus 2W. I distributed the two. And then I have 600 equals 3P plus 3W. Okay, so now I'm going to make an addition problem. I'm just going to multiply the top one by negative 3 and the bottom one by 2. That's all. So I get 6 up. Oh, sorry, I don't need to multiply by negative 3. I forgot this should be a minus sign. Okay, so I have 600, oh, I don't have, I multiply by three. On the top I have 1800 equals 6P plus 6W. On the bottom I have 1200 equals 3P, nope, 6P, good Lord, 6P minus 6W. Well, the Ws cancel out, right? So I get um, 3000 equals 12P. Divide by 12, P is 250. So 250 miles an hour is the plane. And then we go back up and we put P into the original equation. 600 equals two times 250 plus two W. Um, so this is 500, 600 
equals 500 plus 2w minus 500. So I get 100 equals 2w divided by 2w equals 50. So the speed of the plane is 250 miles per hour. The speed of the wind is 50 miles an hour. <coughs> All right, this is the last one. We're just gonna write it out and then you guys are gonna try to solve it. Dan and Cheryl paddled their canoe 40 minutes and five hours with the current, with the current, so it's helping them, and 16 minutes and eight hours against the current, okay? So we wanna find the current and the speed of the canoe in still water. This is current. We want the speed of the canoe. Okay, so when they were with the current, when it worked together, they went five hours, right? They paddled for 40 minutes, 40 miles. I, this is where this is all going wrong. Apparently my typos. Okay, the, they paddled 40 miles in five hours, and then 16 miles in eight hours. Good gravy. All right, so they got 16 miles against the current, and it took them eight hours. That's all. You guys can do the rest from there. I will tell you that the speed of the canoe is going to be five miles an hour, and the speed of the current is going to be three. If you have questions about these, ask. These are one of the hardest sets of problems we do here. So please, it's normal to be confused and it's normal to ask for help. Go ahead and do that. All right, I'll see you in the discussion.